This video goes with sections 75, 76, and 77 of Hansen and Quinn's Greek and Intensive Course and covers Hada Heda Tada, Hutas Haute Tuta, and compares the different demonstratives. You can find these things in Hansen and Quinn on pages 239 to 242. First, let's look at the forms of Hada Heda Tada. You're going to see that they look very familiar. This is a demonstrative adjective and pronoun, and therefore it has to be available in all the cases, numbers, and genders. What you'll see, though, is that all you need to do to have the form Hada Heda Tada in all of those cases, numbers, and genders is to take the article and add the enclitic ending da to it. Pretty much that's all it is, the article plus da. It doesn't change the accent except in the masculine and feminine nominative. And the only other thing it changes about the spelling of the article is that final sigmas become medial sigmas. The translation is this or this here, and we'll talk a little later more about what this demonstrative means compared to the other ones, but this is the one that is closest to the speaker. The way Hada Heda Tada works is much the way that a kanos worked. When you use it as an adjective, that is to modify a noun to say this thing or that thing, um, it always goes with the article. So you'll see things like Hoida hoi adelphoi biblia egraphon, which means these brothers were writing books. Or perhaps Eistain de tain nason, to this island. There's this sort of nice bouncy thing that goes on with Hada where it's repeated with that article sound both before the de and after it. So tain de tain or Hi to hi, it's pretty fun. Hada heda tada is also very often used as a pronoun, in other words, without a noun, but referring to or replacing other nouns. So tainda pausata means y'all will stop this woman. If there's nothing for the pronoun to refer back to, you use woman for singular feminine, women for plural feminine, man for singular masculine, men for plural masculine, and thing or things for the neuter. But very often, Hada Heda Tada is going to be referring back to another noun in one of the three Greek genders, in which case you need to keep aware of how English would refer to that antecedent, which isn't always sounding feminine or masculine in English. Another example with hada heda tada used as a pronoun, tada ephulaxan, we guarded these things. So let's go on to the demonstrative hutas haute tuta. Just as with the other demonstratives, hutas haute tuta needs to be able to appear in all case numbers and genders. So here is the declension of hutas haute tuta. Hutas, haute, tuta, tutu, tautes, tutu, tuto, taute, tuto, tuton, tautain, tuta, and in the plural, hutoi, hautai, tauta, tuton, 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 tutois, tautais, tutois, tutus, tautas, tauta. This demonstrative means this or that, depending on the context, and we'll talk a little bit more about how you decide which one later. A couple of things to note about this declension and how you can remember uh, the forms. First of all, notice that just as with the article, the masculine and feminine nominative forms have rough breathings instead of towels. Also, notice that the diphthong in all of the feminine forms, except for the genitive plural, is au instead of u. 
and that the other two places that the ow appears are the neuter, plural, nominative, and accusative. That should help you remember these forms. Hutas haute tuta behaves the same way as hade and ekenos when it comes to modifying nouns. As an adjective, it always appears with the article and the noun. So, tautas tas gefuras efulates is the correct way in Greek to say you were guarding these bridges or those bridges. Again, in a moment, we'll talk about whether you would choose these or those. It's very often used as a pronoun, just as the other demonstratives are. And so you might see tutus paususen to mean they will stop these men or they will stop those men. And just like hada, tutus can be referring to an antecedent of a noun in any of the Greek genders, so be aware of how English would translate that usage. Another example of Hutas hauta tuta used as a pronoun. Tauta didaxo. I will teach these things or I will teach those things. So you've now learned the forms for three different demonstratives. Akenos, akene, akena, hada, heda, tada, and hutas haute tuta. Let's talk a little bit about the differences among them. The first way to think about them is in a physical sense and what their relationship is to the speaker. Is it close to the speaker or far from the speaker? If you are talking about something, are demonstrating, are pointing to something that's close to the speaker, very close, you're going to use hada. Think of that as this thing right here. If you're looking at something far away from the speaker, you're going to use a kanos. That's the farthest away, that thing over there. Then hutas comes in between. If you are using it in a context with hada, it's farther away from the speaker than hada. And so if it's with um, hada and uh, you're using hutas as well, hada will mean this and hutas will mean that. But if you're using hutas in a context with ekenos, then ekenos is farther away and hutas is closer. And hutas will mean this in relation to ekenos is that. So that's one way to think about the three different demonstratives. So these words are going to be used sometimes in formal writing and speeches. So let's get our ancient speaker here. And say he's talking about hoi nei kai hoi gerontes. And he goes on to talk a little bit. And then he wants to talk about the former, the nei He's going to say a kainoi to mean the former. Because from his perspective where he is in the speech, the nei are farther away. And then if he wants to go on and talk about the latter, hoi gerontes, He's going to say hutoi because those are closer to him in the speech from where he is now. Also, if he wants to talk about the following, the things he's going to say next, he's going to use the neuter plural of hada and say tada to mean the following. Allied with that is tauta, a form of hutos, the neuter plural form of hutos, to mean the preceding. Okay, one more thing I want to say about how these particular demonstratives are used. You can use a kainos and hutos to mean somebody famous, to point to somebody famous or even in infamous. So, a kainos ha poietes and hutos ha poietes can mean that famous or infamous poet or this famous or infamous poet, depending on the context. One last thing. For students of Latin, it might be easy to understand the differences among hada, hutas, and ekenos if you think about hada as uh, analogous to the forms of hic, hic, hoc, hutas as analogous to the forms of is, ea, id, and ekenos as analogous to the forms of ille. And that's what I have for you for 
sections 75, 76, and 77, more demonstratives.